In this video, we are going to talk about stock market crash of 2008 how and why. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for the future updates. On September 29, 2008, the stock market crashed. In intraday trade, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 777.68 points. Until March 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic began, it was the biggest point loss in history. The market plummeted partially as a result of Congress's first rejection of the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act of 2008, more often referred to as the Bank Bailout Package. However, the strains that culminated in the catastrophe had been accumulating for an extended period of time. On October 9, 2007, the Dow reached a pre-recession high of 14,164.53 and closed at that level. By March 5, 2009, it had fallen over 50% to 6,594.44. Although the percentage fall was not the largest in history, it was savage. 2007 the Dow Jones Industrial Average began the year at 12,474.52. 2. Despite mounting warnings about the subprime mortgage issue, it increased. The U.S. Department of Commerce cautioned on December 19, 2006, that October's new house permits were 28% lower than a year before. 4. However, experts believed the housing downturn would have little effect on the rest of the economy. Indeed, many expressed relief that the overheated real estate market looked to be stabilizing. 5. However, plummeting housing values resulted in subprime mortgage defaults. The Fed began injecting cash into the system by purchasing banks' subprime mortgages. Seven economists issued a warning in October over the extensive usage of collateralized debt obligations and other derivatives. The Bureau of Economic Analysis B, updated its growth projection upward as the year wound down. 8. According to the report, the nation's gross domestic product climbed by 0.5% in the third quarter. Its previous assessment was that it had declined by 0.5%. The U.S. economy appeared to be resilient to a housing slowdown and bank liquidity limitations. The Dow finished the year at 13,264.82, only slightly below its October peak. 2008 The B revised its fourth quarter 2007 GDP growth estimate downward in late January. It said that growth was merely 0.6%. For the first time since 2004, the economy shed 17,000. The B revised its fourth quarter 2007 GDP growth estimate downward in late January. It said that growth was merely 0.6%. For the first time since 2004, the economy shed 17,000 jobs. The Dow ignored the news and maintained a range of 12,000 to 13,000 points until March. On March 17, the Federal Reserve intervened to preserve Bear Stearns. Dow Jones Industrial Average fell to an intraday low of 11,650.44 but appeared to rebound. Indeed, many believed the Bear Stearns bailout would avert a bear market. By May, the Dow had surpassed 13,000 points. It appeared as though the worst had passed. The issue endangered government-sponsored enterprises Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in July 2008. They required federal assistance. Treasury insured around $25 billion of their loans and purchased equity in Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. The Federal Housing Administration insured new loans of $300 billion. The Dow Jones Industrial Average dipped to 10,962.54 on July 15. It quickly recovered and stayed above 11,000 for the remainder of the summer. 2008 September The month began with some unsettling news. Lehman Brothers announced bankruptcy on Monday, September 15, 2008. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell more than 200 points. 2. The Federal Reserve announced its bailout of insurance Behemoth American International Group Inc. on Tuesday, September 16, 2008. It issued a $85 billion loan in exchange for 79.9% stock, effectively acquiring the company. AIG was cash-strapped. 
it was trying to repay credit default swaps against now defunct mortgage-backed assets MBS. Money market funds lost $196 billion in the days following Lehman's bankruptcy. That is where the majority of businesses keep their cash overnight. Businesses worried and shifted to even safer treasury notes. They did so as a result of the high Libra rates. Banks had pushed rates higher out of fear of lending to one another. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 449.36 points on September 17, 2008. Two of the markets recovered more than 400 points on Thursday, September 18, 2008. Two investors were informed of the existence of a fresh bank bailout deal. The Dow Jones Industrial Average closed the week at 11,388.44 on Friday, September 19, 2008. It was just slightly lower than Monday's opening price of 11,416.37. It was just slightly lower than Monday's opening price of 11,416.37. The asset-backed commercial paper money market mutual fund liquidity facility was established by the Fed. It provided cash to banks for the purpose of purchasing commercial paper from money market funds. The announcement by the Federal Reserve revealed that credit markets were partially halted and in panic mode. Secretary Henry Paulson and Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke handed the bank rescue package to Congress on Saturday, September 20, 2008. The Dow fluctuated between 11,000 and 12,000 points until September 29, 2008, when the Senate voted against the bailout deal. 2008 October The bailout plan was ultimately ratified by Congress in early October, but the damage had already been done. According to the Labor Department, the economy shed a massive 159,000 jobs in the preceding month. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 800 points on Monday, October 6, 2008, falling below 10,000 for the first time since 2004. By providing $540 billion to money market funds, the Fed attempted to shore up banks. The funds required the cash to deal with an onslaught of redemptions. Around $500 billion has been withdrawn from prime money markets since August. J.P. Morgan Chase oversaw the management of the Federal Reserve's Money Market Investor Funding Facility MMIFF. It acquired up to $600 billion in 90-day due certificates of deposit, banknotes, and commercial paper. The remaining $60 billion was raised through the money markets. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.